Good morning, everyone. You are welcome to SPE Lagos virtual technical meeting on signatures of a horizontal well completed near a ceiling boundary. The meeting will be delivered by Professor Steve Adewale. So we'd like to warmly welcome everyone who is here today. Thank you for taking out time from your schedules to join us in today's technical meeting. Grab a cup of a cup of coffee, sit with us and learn without leaving your desk within a period of um, 45 minutes. OK, so just before we go into the day's presentation, my name is Fayama Okoli. I'm the program's chair of SPE Lagos section. On the on your interface, on your virtual interface, you will see the section for Q&A. So this is where we will interact with you. Take your questions and comments as the event goes on. Feel free to write your your questions and any other comments you might have. Um, we will read through and the lecturer today would address them as we go along. All right, um, next slide. All right, so I'm um, seeing it's a virtual event. Uh, we would have to take into consideration some of the safety requirements uh, needed to ensure we have a safe and hitch free event. Despite that everyone is in their various um, places of work or residence, it's important that we, we leave this place complete and in good uh, condition. So the prominent uh, hazard we have today is the COVID-19 uh, risk with the pandemic winding down uh, following the distribution of vaccines around the world. All right, but this does not take away that we'll continue to practice our safe habits, which includes washing our hands frequently and whenever we go outside the house, touch different surfaces. Whenever we interact with people in large or small groups, we wash our hands frequently. If we do not have access to water and soap, we should use a, an alcohol-based sanitizer to ensure that we, we keep ourselves and our spaces clean. Wear a face mask whenever you are out in public and if you cannot uh, practice social distancing. Avoid light, large crowds still. It may look as though the, the situation has, uh, has passed and uh, large gatherings are seen everywhere on the road, on the streets, but we still need to be self-conscious of the times we are in. The COVID is still spreading uh, discreetly amongst uh, different uh, uh, situations, different people. So we still want to avoid large gatherings and be careful, right? So if you feel any COVID-19 symptom, be proactive about it, self-isolate, and you can call the NCDC numbers shown on the screen. All right, so someone has said they cannot see the screen, the slide. Um, if you do see it now, please reconfirm by uh, dropping a comment in the Q&A chat box. At this time, I would like to invite the section chairperson of SPE Lagos section, Mr. Michael Oyere, to give us the opening remarks. Thank you, Michael. Over to you. Thank you very much, um, Fayama, for the um, wonderful opening and introduction. Um, good morning, dear SPE members. Um, our special guest, ladies and gentlemen. It is with great pleasure that uh, on behalf of the Lagos Section Board, I welcome you to the technical meeting for the month of March. Um, as always, uh, and in keeping with the SPE mission of collecting, disseminating, and exchange of technical knowledge concerning exploration, development, and production of oil and gas resources, as well as um, providing opportunities for professionals to enhance their technical and um, professional competence. 
We have continued with our industry and academia partnership. Uh, on this note, our guest lecturer today, all the way from the Great University of Benin, Professor Steve Adewole, will be sharing insights with us on signatures of a horizontal well completed near ceiling boundaries. I uh, will therefore urge us to pay close attention so as to fully benefit from today's session. Um, as we look forward to a rewarding session today, let me once again, on um, behalf of the Lagos section, welcome you to the technical meeting and thank you all for joining. Good morning. Uh, over to you, Fayama. Thank you again, uh, Michael. All right, so here we will now go into the day's event proper. But before we go into this, I would uh, I would talk a little bit about our agenda. We would uh, go through the technical meeting where our visiting lecturer will give us an insightful and very educative uh, talk and presentation. And thereafter, we would uh, go into some of the announcements of upcoming programs that Lagos section will be holding. So please stay with us to the very end so we do not miss out any of this exciting uh, information. Professor Steve Adewale is our very um, honorable guest today. He is a professor of petroleum engineering in the Department of Petroleum Engineering, University of Benin, Nigeria. His area of research is uh, Focus around reservoir characterization and engineering mathematics. He has over 25 years of teaching and research uh, experience and over 100 technical publications in reputable local and international journals. He is a consultant to many petroleum engineering institutes in Nigeria and abroad. So today we make welcome Professor Steve Adewale to the platform. Thank you, sir. Over to you. Thank you very much. Good morning, all our uh, listeners and attenders. Um, today, we hope to quickly use the short uh, opportunity that we have to examine, uh, to examine signatures of a, a horizontal well that is uh, uh, completed near a ceiling fort. I will uh, make a pause now to share the screen uh, with slides. Well, yeah, I hope uh, you can see the slides now. Uh, um, signatures are very important. The status uh, of uh, actual events that uh, take place in the reservoir system. Uh, today, we shall examine the signatures of the uh, horizontal wave that is a drill located near a ceiling band or a ceiling pop. Uh, that of a vertical wave has been extensively reported in the literature. We have been making references to, to the results of the vertical wave, uh, so that is not before us. Uh, well, uh, we shall quickly go through uh, an introduction and examine the history of uh, horizontal wet technology, the benefits and challenges of horizontal wet wells, aims and objectives of this lecture, the sketches of uh, horizontal well near a ceiling port, how, 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 do, how does a horizontal well it Excuse me, sir. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, very well. We can see the slides also. Uh, yes. If we could put it on slide mode for our okay. audience. Thank you. Okay. So we shall uh, look at the sketches of a daughter well near a, a ceiling port or a combination of a ceiling port. We shall look at the concept of uh, dimensionless pressures and dimensionless pressure derivatives because those are the basis uh, of our lectures for deriving the signatures. We shall look at the uses of dimensionless pressures and dimensionless pressure derivatives uh, following the derivations quickly. Then uh, 
we shall discuss the results for the movement that we have selected. That is um, the result that we near the filling port. What are the dimensionless periods and the dimensionless period derivatives for such a well? And uh, where are the actual signatures? How do they look? Uh, uh, although uh, it is not uh, on this outline, but I promise that uh, we shall take an example uh, of a, a practical problem to illustrate our derivations and our conclusions. Uh, then uh, I will take you through the nomenclature that uh, we have. Uh, Lies the only derivation. Then, of course, I will uh, acknowledge uh, all of you. Now, uh, the dream of a reservoir engineer and a production engineer is to continue to produce clean oil, no matter the nature of the external band. We will not want to see that external band. We want to continue to produce oil. But uh, that dream is usually short lived, immediately. Uh, well, this put of production, maybe because of uh, its nearness to uh, an unfavorable external boundary, like a silly boundary or a constant pressure boundary. Uh, that is why it is good that we should be able to foretell, predict the approach of such a boundary, even as we are producing from the water well. Because uh, 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 if we do not have a, a, a caution, we will soon find ourselves in a situation where the clean oil we are producing will just come to a stop. And that is not good for us. So, uh, in this lecture, we hope to utilize dimensionless pressure and dimensionless pressure distributions to predict the signatures of the horizontal web. Our aim basically is to have uh, the expressions for dimensionless pressure and dimensionless pressure derivatives derived for the horizontal web computed near a silly boundary. Uh, the information really is to, is, is to help us know how uh, fast or how near, how fast we are moving close to the steady state flow uh, so that we can take up you know, some uh, other strategies to delay the arrival of a uh, low flow boundary, which will uh, delay or interrupt our smooth oil production. We want to continue to enjoy infinite active flow. Uh, the, for us to be able to do that, we must know what lies ahead of us, even what we are producing. The horizontal way, or horizontal way technology started far back in 1907. That was in Russia. Uh, it suffered very serious unacceptability uh, to the extent that at uh, conferences organized for uh, introduction of the, the concept of the way technology were deserted. But that, you know, that dragged on up to 1941 when they really created the first uh, horizontal web, which was then called the Green Hole. Fortunately, today, uh, today uh, we, uh, we now have so many horizontal ways in different parts of the oil and gas uh, range, thanks to the advances achieved in the US. And, uh, Russia in a new theory technology. Uh, apart from uh, the difficulty in uh, accepting the technology and the challenges of dream, which have been overcome to the last century, the next, the next uh, challenge became the characterization of Southwest. How do we characterize the horizontal way? Efforts have been made in this regard by so many authors, Ragavan, Oscar, Woody, name it. And uh, our humble self here have also tried to make uh, some modest efforts uh, at characterizing horizontal well. A horizontal well will offer you more incremental, initial and incremental oil and gas production. It delays water production compared to vertical wells. They are better injectors if you ever try to apply them. And we can use a horizontal way, just one horizontal way, to link as many reservoirs as possible. But there are some challenges uh, ranging from the high cost uh, to instability issues, especially in our consolidated formations, 
And then characterization is also not a problem. I mean, not, not, not as easy. Characterization uh, has been a very big challenge since the, uh, the Zodar Way technology was accepted and conclusions uh, have been made. How do you characterize such way? Look at uh, some pictures of uh, horizontal waves near the ceiling box. These are horizontal waves. Uh, this one in particular is located in uh, the ceiling, the tail of the ceiling box, inclined at 90 degrees. This one is simply parallel to uh, a ceiling box at the top, and then at the bottom here, and then here at an, and at an acute angle, you have a horizontal well located between that pair of ports. Here is a horizontal well uh, located between a, pair, a, a pair of parallel ports. And then uh, here we have a horizontal well located in the box shape laser power system. Uh, in number seven, this picture number seven is showing to you uh, a horizontal well located uh, in a, a partially uh, sealed uh, laser bar. That uh, it's only one part of the river bar partially open. These are some just, uh, just some pictures of horizontal well location that are possible near the ceiling box or a pair of ceiling box. We shall quickly take some assumptions. We are assuming infinite active flow throughout our organization. Then, uh, basic angle of inclinations are considered uh, basic angles like. Uh, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, 45 degrees, 30 degrees, such angles that easily divide 360 would have to remain that. Those are our basic angles. Um, we shall consider a ceiling port. There are other, there are other types of boundaries, but today we shall be considering a ceiling port. The infinite conductivity behavior of the horizontal well, which uh, by after after the final conductivity consideration, we shall also look at a uniform cross condition. Whether they are the same or not, you can see the constant production or injection rate. We shall be considering both production and injection rate but at constant rate in each of the two cases. Then in the way, in the way that we will be considering, we shall assume skin a web of not to be significant. Throughout our realization. A horizontal well dimensionless pressure expression is given by equation one for an infinite acting uh, horizontal well. Then the der derivative, that dimensionless pressure derivative, is given by equation two. If you have a horizontal well located near a band, in this case a ceiling band, the total pressure drop in that horizontal well will be affected by the pressure of the image well that is at the meter. Therefore, the total pressure drop in the object well will be the sum of the pressure drops in that, in that uh, object well and the pressure drop in all the image wells generated as a result of the information. That's shown in the screen. Then, a uh, dimensionless form. If you write equation three, then for injection, equation five shows you the total dimensionless pressure. If it is a if it's a total when used for injection. Our challenge, our major assignment today uh, is to find solutions to the equations that we have shown, especially equation three, four. Uh, up to five. Uh, within the web ball vicinity or somewhere very close to it, the solution to equation four is given as shown in equation six and down to equation seven. Now, if equation six and seven are the solution to the uh, equation or to the, uh, the equation that we saw. Earlier, that is, uh, that is equation uh, four, five. Then, 
uh, if we go through one complete cycle, if I take you through one complete cycle, that is, uh, for instance, PD is equal to 100 and then up to 1000, for instance, then we shall have position 8 as our pressure gradient. Pressure gradient shows you an end. N is the number of images formed that is not of the initial fernando design. Solution continues uh, at full radial flow. The solution to five is given as this. Uh, this looks like uh, that is for the uh, injection phase. It therefore means that for injection, going to one a cycle, complete cycle, we will have equation 11. Which is a uh, uh, which is a measureless pressure per cycle, log cycle. If we want to calculate the dimensionless pressure derivative equation 12, we help us. And applying equation 12 to the, the earlier equations 4 and 5, that is for solution and injection, we will have equation 6, I mean equation 13. And then that's for, for production and equation 14 for injection. Now, in summary, in summary, at long time, therefore, for production, which of 15 is the dimensionless pressure derivative and equation 16. Uh, that is for production and equation 16 is the dimensionless pressure derivative of injection. Now, how do those equations behave? All this in the solution that we have uh, right. You see, horizontal waves are usually uh, in the range from 1,000. Some could be 500 or even less, but mostly 1,000, 1,005, and even much more. The web body radar, horizontal web body radar, are characterized by this magnitude. So this by minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, minus 5. Then if we take our dimensionless parameter to be uh, as shown here, 2i over L, that means if we base all our dimensionless parameters on a reservoir, I mean, web or half length, then for an isotropic uh, reservoir, you see that this ID, that is every dimensionless parameter, will be as small as, or starting from the largest one to as small as even 10 to the minus 5, or even less for an isotropic reservoir system. Now, uh, how does the pressure derivative behave? The least dimensionless pressure is written as follows. That is the equation seven. And then for the images, we have them in equation. That is for production, which is plus or minus for injection. It therefore means that during infinite activity, uh, uh, the arguments of the EI functions seem to be about the same, about, you know, the same. They, are, they all seem to be very small. We substitute them properly. The, the smaller the angle of inclination, the smaller the image distance, and vice versa. The nearer the object to the inclination, the smaller the image distance. Then the larger the image distance, the longer it, the time it takes for to boost that space, that is for the external bandwidth, that is the force now. Okay. Now, uh, for you to have more insight into the exponential uh, integral function, these are the tables of the exponential integral function as tabulated in the uh, lead. This is for a range of uh, uh, 0 0.0 to 0 0.29, continues down to uh, 0, I mean 2.09. These are characteristic uh, EI functions. Of various values of the argument of the EI, which in this case is represented by letter X. Now, what results can we get? If we take data to be true, uh, how data becomes true is, is as a result of the behavior of uh, the source function that is uh, uh, a, 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 that, that affects the X axis of, uh, of the horizontal wave. If we take beta to be true, then uh, for a horizontal wave, the 
dimensionless pressure gradient. If you remember we derived dimensionless pressure gradient earlier, we could substitute beta as two, then the dimensionless pressure gradient is simply as shown in the seventeen. Equation seventeen, yes, it's for a horizontal wave. For a, for a vertical wave, it has been reported that the the gradient is uh, as shown in equation fifteen. That is why for a horizontal, I mean for a vertical wave near a straight boundary, which uh, has a inclination of 180 degrees. The number of images is just one. And if you put one in the initial regime, you discover that your pressure gradient per cycle is uh, double. That is why we have we see in the literature that once the horizontal well approaches the ceiling court, there is a doubling of uh, uh, the slope. This is just the confirmation of it. And that goes to Gives a lot, give a lot of credence to the rendition we have had for uh, the horizontal web. The dimensionless pressure for horizontal web from equation 11, if, if it is rejection now, is given uh, as equation 19, and for a vertical web, it is simply equation 20 per cycle. The results continue. Uh, for production rate, dimensionless pressure is given in equation 21, uh, if it's production, and for injection, it's given uh, in equation 22. These are examples of some signatures. If the fourth angle is this, we know what happens. Yeah, that is not uh, possible. If you have a, uh, okay, what if it is 30, yeah, there will be 11 images. If we assume our dimensionless web ball length to be one, it uh, did for me that uh, the, for production, there will be the, 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 the dimensionless pressure per cycle will be 13.8 and then minus 13.8 for injection. And then dimensionless pressure derivative will be 6 for production and minus 6 for injection. We have several of them. The one that is familiar, the one that is familiar is the, uh, the one of y which is which which in the, in the case of the vertical web is very well known to us and that's the doubling of the slope that we talked about 2.3026 if a, if a vertical web is not approaching uh the silly boundary that is if it's still infinite axis slope is simply 1.1513 but the moment it starts approaching an infinite i mean a, a, a silly boundary slope doubles to 2.3026 and then for uh, injection, it's uh, obviously the direct opposite. Then, uh, examples continue. Assuming our well length is now, uh, is now, the dimensionless well length is now 10. Just an example. For the same 30 degrees angle of inclination, where we have 11 images, then the, the dimensionless pressure uh, gradient per cycle. Is 1.38, uh, whereas uh, for injection it will be minus 1.38. The derivative for production is 0.6 and it's minus 0.6 for injection. That goes on down to 180 degrees for the same uh, for the same uh, uh, LD of 10. In that case, your uh, your production. Uh, I mean, uh, for production, the dimensionless pressure per cycle is 0.2303 and minus 0.2303 for uh, injection. Then uh, we, we can safely conclude that uh, for a horizontal web, uh, if it is used as a producer, if the signatures will conform to equation 23 and the dimensionless pressure derivative will conform to equation 24. As an injector, it will conform to of 25 and which of 26 uh, as a dimensionless pressure derivative of an injector. So not well injection. Flow time, therefore, for not well length and port angle determine this signature. What it therefore means is that if we percolate as far away from the port as possible, then we find the delay in the state. That is the influence of the filling port might be delayed. By that pattern. Well, we have, <coughs> <excuse me. coughs> we have 
the demonstration problems here, where uh, we have considered um, the pay of ceiling force declined at angle of 90 degrees. The horizontal well is 29 feet from the bottom port, and then uh, the also 29 feet from uh, the vertical port. The two ports are inclined at uh, 90 degrees. The blue color is the case, the object well location, the rotor uh, well location now, object well. And then the one in uh, orange or red uh, is at the image west. For 90 degrees, uh, there will be three images as indicated. The dimensional distances of each of them are indicated here. Uh, and that was obtained by uh, either graphical approach or use of the trigonometry. The distances are 58, 82 feet, and then another 58. Then, using the numerical that we have defined later in the, uh, we will see in our work, the dimensional is I mean, uh, where body deals will be given as a 3.75 times by minus 4, arising from the where body deals of 0.375. Then, a uh, feet thickness of 40 feet of the reservoir, where ball length of 2,000 feet. Then, we are able to derive this uh, dimensionless uh, parameter. For the well length, therefore, the dimensionless well length is 25. The dimensionless distance of the first image is 0 0.085 feet. Second one is 0 0.082. The third one is 0.05 feet. These are the, these are the dimensionless parameters that you need to substitute in the equation that uh, we have uh, earlier derived. Now, uh, if we go back to equation four and apply this dimensionless parameter, it then for me that the dimensionless pressure is given as this, and the dimensionless pressure derivative is given as uh, Sorry that uh, I didn't label this uh, equation. So uh, those are the uh, dimensionless pressures and dimensionless pressure Derivatives for the example that we are using. So, the, if we now solve this uh, expression, if we find for different uh, dimensionless times, both dimensionless pressure and dimensionless pressure derivatives, then we will have this result. We will have this result. We have taken our dimensionless time range to be from 10 raised to power minus 3 to 10 raised to the power. Now, uh, what, what, what does that show to us? It appears we have uh, lost connectivity with the lecturer. Yes, it's, it's coming back. It's okay, coming you're back, back it's now. Coming back. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's go back to where we start. If you look at this, if you look at this uh, plot, um, you will see that the slope at the later part of the measureless pressure conforms to this, that's in agreement with this, our derived relationship. And the signature of a horizontal well are uh, very close to a ceiling force at late time. And then for the uh, dimensionless pressure derivative, it is equivalent to this, which is also equivalent to the derived expression for uh, dimensionless pressure derivative uh, for a horizontal way, if it is filled and completed near the ceiling. But that therefore means that uh, the derivation that we have uh, made here are uh, in agreement with uh, what is observable even in the uh, line. Uh, as you can see from the results, even before the plot, you will see that uh, from here to here, for instance, is 0 0.1 in 43. And then you will see that from somewhere here, up to the end of the time that we are facing, the middle time that we are facing, 
the dimensionless pressure derivative expectedly, the means constant at 0 0.08. The dimensionless pressure gradient start being the same as from about 10 raised power, 10 raised power zero up to 10 raised power, and in fact, and beyond. So, and that is in a, in a agreement with uh, what we are seeing on this uh, plot. Um, well, we have used quite a, a few nomenclature for uh, uh, the equation that we have uh, right. Uh, ID is this equation 27, equation 28, up to 30, are the nomenclature, are the equation that we have used. And what are the actual nomenclature? We have all of these as our nomenclature. We have we co actually consulted a few literature uh, starting from uh, Castle and Giga, who started the uh, mathematical modeling for physical systems. But in their own time, they choose a uh, uh, conductors that have been uh, adapted for free flow petroleum. Uh, I mean, a release of was. We also look through a law firm that assisted us regarding and running the only. J.C. Matthews, Oscar and Ragaba, Papazakos, Petal, Woody, and Hector. Then a few of the Moody's efforts we also made in the past also helped us uh, tremendously. Well, uh, I, at this point, would like to thank SP Legal Session Nigeria for the privilege to listen to me today. I would thank every guest, uh, every participant. I have taken time out of the service to listen to my presentation. Uh, God bless you. Have a nice day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, <coughs> Professor Steve Adewole. We are, we are really grateful for the time you have taken to give us this uh, very interesting lecture and it's a uh, pivotal to the oil and gas industry processes uh, identifying the signatures of uh, ceiling faults around horizontal wells while drilling is very uh, important in identifying uh, the hydrocarbon behavior the the potential for producibility of these wells so this lecture is really welcome. We thank you for taking out the time. And just before we go into the Q&A section, I want to draw the attention and bring back our minds to some of the key areas that you touched in this lecture today. Uh, you, you, you started by giving us a brief summary and history of horizontal well technology, the importance of horizontal wells, uh, the advantage it brings to oil and gas production today, the accessibility to several reservoirs uh, using the same string, the, the same uh, borehole, and of course, uh, taking advantage of the cost efficiency that this brings to the industry. You um, described all this in the benefits, as well as bringing our minds to some of the specific challenges of uh, drilling horizontal wells. These are peculiar because they do not follow the regular convention of uh, vertical well drilling, and it requires for uh, thus for, for special uh, remedies to be applied, ensuring that we do not lose our horizontal wells after putting in uh, all the costs and technology. You went further to describe uh, the, the behaviors of uh, ceiling faults around horizontal wells. You also described this around the uh, vertical wells to give us context to highlight the differences. And you, you did a lot of this using uh, some of the equations behind uh, um, reservoir characterization of these uh, wells using dimensionless pressure and uh, pressure derivative signatures, which we can use as a stamp uh, to identify these behaviors and their different scenarios. You went further to carry out, uh, to show us more scenarios around uh, well lengths 
and fault angles and the kind of uh, pressure behavior that we would expect to see when these signatures are prevalent. So um, we thank you again for a very insightful lecture. We have uh, learned one or two things without even having to leave our desk and we appreciate that. Best of all, you have captured it in, in a very timely manner so that the lessons uh, gained from here will stay with us and stick to our memories. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. So we'd like to at this time entertain questions from our, our attendees. For everyone who has joined in today, we appreciate your time again, taking out time from your busy schedule. We would like to engage with you. Our professor Steve here would like to engage with you. So please feel free to put down your questions in the chat box. And while we are getting more of these, uh, so a few others have come in and uh, one question that I would like to to pull out of these other questions is in the Ninja Delta, what is the prevalence we see around uh, ceiling faults uh, and with horizontal wells, what do what have you experienced in your experience seen as a prevalence and uh, some of the responses that uh, operators should apply in these cases? Yeah, uh, horizontal wells. Uh, okay, let, let me start by saying that um, heterogeneities, uh, which are the main causes of ceiling, uh, are prevalent everywhere whether in the Niger Delta or the North Sea or in the Arabian countries, they are everywhere. So what we are trying to do here today is to uh, give you a picture of what it, it, it looks like if you are, if you're well is seeing it or is feeling the effect or is approaching uh, a region where its influence will affect your production. That is what we are doing here. So, uh, ceiling faults are everywhere. They are not. Uh, they are not uh, the characteristics of uh, uh, only one oil region. They are everywhere. They are everywhere, and uh, the advice we give to operators here to to it, 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 like it, to maximize oil production is to take the type of advice that we have offered here that uh, we should move as far away as practicable. From uh, a horizontal, I mean a ceiling port before we put our perforation. You see, a horizontal way may be uh, we have a starting length. The way the perforations are matters a lot. We are saying that perforations should be as far away from the ceiling port as far as possible, as far as possible. Even angle of inclination of the uh, port. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that is a lesson that indeed uh, every operator should look to apply. And of course, uh, coming to that conclusion would require extensive uh, study of the field before even drilling the well. So the next question I would like to bring across to you, please, is do we really have um, enough interference well testing done in this part of the world for for confirmation of the faults on whether they are sealing or not because uh, i would say most of the wells here are are somewhat easy to produce and uh, to heat the oil or gas as the case may be but do we go the extra mile to take on the cost of drilling wells just for the sake of performing interference well testing? No, this is not a, although it has application in the interference well test, uh, well testing and analysis, but that's not what we are saying here. You see, we should not be, we should not be taking away with, uh, which is really not correct. You, you are producing oil today, Mean that uh, nothing will interrupt the oil production tomorrow. We are saying that as you are enjoying it, what approach of a boundary, a ceiling port, 
which is capable of stopping or any movement. The what this lecture is telling you that when you start seeing this, when you start seeing these gradients, when you start seeing these derivatives, it means that you are approaching a ceiling pot, which is capable of uh, reducing your oil production. Uh, any okay, thank you very much, That's sir. That's what we have. No operator, <laughs> no, no operator goes on without even doing a quick plot of his production failures at the time. You must, you must do this just to guide yourself and uh, assess who your completion, whether it's efficient or whether it will endure. So whether you are producing oil or not, these are some of the measures you, you must take because uh, you don't want to wake up one morning and discover that uh, the oil that you were producing yesterday, the oil is no longer cooperating with you and uh, either stopping production or it will uh, gradually decline. And they are simple terms that look if you have this plot and you see this gradient or you see this derivative, that means that there is a filling pot nearby. At any moment from now, your oil production will be interrupted. That is thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for the um, emphasis on on the approach to be taken in addressing uh, these challenges. We have one last question and it says uh, in describing the signatures of the ceiling beds in horizontal well, could we have angles above 180 degrees? Yeah, it, 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 you, the angles are just theta. They could be acute, they could be obtuse, they could be, they could be much larger. It doesn't matter. Once it is theta, these are the relationships. We we did not, um, although we we consider the basic angle for our, our own example, uh, any other angle can be considered. But I want to caution here that uh, there is a problem uh, which has not been adequately solved. In fact, I have not been solved in this picture so far. Uh, using angle, that has been, uh, work on that has been done, we have not, uh, we have not brought it up. Uh, the works you have seen or you will see so far are on um, basic angles, like these angles that will be vitally sitting uh, without a remainder. And even at that, those angles that have been considered in this picture, they are just like 80, 60, uh, 90 degrees, and so on. Nobody has thought about, uh, you know, as small as 2 degrees, as small as 4 degrees, as small as 10 degrees. This work covers all and like this angle. As for even if you even if it's not basic, that is, even if uh, the angle does the, the angle does not divide this system throughout the remainder. Uh, there are there are processes or procedures we could go through to get the number of images that we did not discuss yet. Provided you can know the number of images that is provided you know the angle of Nation, then you can tell me your videos, you can tell me your videos. That's what we are seeing here. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Sir. It's getting more interesting. We have uh, two more questions, and I would say because of time, we would, uh, this will be the last questions we will take, and then we move into the next section of the technical meeting. So the question goes: How do we determine the distance to the no ceiling faults with with this analysis to help us enjoy extended oil production? Well, the distance to a fault, if I know the dimensionless, if I know the total failure drop in the well, if I know the total failure drop in the well, then I can find the distance uh, uh, of that well from uh, the object well. Or the main well, I can find that. But that means, uh, if I know the total pressure drop, then I can relate that to my equations, total equations for potentially five. And then I can calculate the total distance or the approximate distance between the two. The problem that has been, uh, or the question that has been asked here has to do with the uh, two words that are produced from uh, two reservoirs that are either communicating 
and uh, uh, that means a pool is aware that I, that I either belong to one operator or different operators. Yes, if I know the total failure drop from an observation web, then I can use that to uh, find the actual distance the producing web is from my own web. That is if you have shot in your own web. Uh, on the other hand, if you are also producing and that operator is also producing, it's impossible to find the total distance uh, that the neighboring web is from your own web. Thank you, sir. This is great to know because uh, unitization is a big uh, concern in this part of uh, the world. And the last question goes, uh, can we use this analysis with a scenario where the fault is not sealing? Uh, if it, you see, uh, look, look at it here. Yeah. The, 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 the fault here is not sealing. Um, and that uh, we believe that uh, it creates, as you produce, and pressure transits are generated, they act in like echoes. The echoes go and come back to try to stop and attenuate the strength of the transient. Now, it is not a case of a where a in a, 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 a neighborhood. These images are not physical ways, as you may know. They are not physical ways. They are they are they are positions far away from the object way that try to send back send back the impact of the of the, the transient generated in your producing way. And those impacts tend to reduce oil production rates. Now by summing up the strength of the impact, we can we can look for uh, strategies to reduce the impact. That's what we are doing here. And that's why we are suggesting that that as much as possible locate or put your populations far away from uh, the ceiling port or let the angle of discrimination help you in you know, trying to locate uh, uh, positions on your horizontal uh, web. Those are the issues. Thank you once <coughs> again. Uh, so we have really uh, gained a lot from this uh, presentation today. And uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we look forward to another opportunity where we will learn from you and apply to more and more challenging industry uh, seed scenarios. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So just before we round off for today, I would uh, now take us into uh, the next section where I show the upcoming events being uh, prepared by SPE Lagos section. We have uh, quite a number of events lined up in the next coming weeks. We, uh, we beg your indul indulgence, we crave your indulgence to look out for the publicity of these events when they come out and uh, join us on the journey of, um, of educating the oil and gas professionals, of uh, engaging the members of SPE, uh, SPE uh, International as we continue to support ourselves and win together with SPE. Okay, so on the 13th of April 2021, which is as in a few days time, less than two weeks, we will be having a distinguished lecture series on well placements, where are we headed? Why non-drillers should care, right? This will be delivered by John Clegg. And afterwards, we have a virtual walk and run competition where you do not have to come to a physical site. You can stay in the comfort of your home and, uh, and your workplace. Take part in this um, contest through your phone. We want to use it as an opportunity to keep fit, uh, especially in these times, and to ensure that we are also having our team bonding activities to, to carry everyone along in one space. So look out for this. It's going to be very exciting, and there are prizes to be won. Uh, we invite you to join us in this activity. 
for our young professionals, we have uh, designed a, a forum on creating your own opportunities in the energy industry. This is especially critical in these times when uh, the energy industry is transiting. More and more young professionals need to find their, their place in the industry. So join us on May 1st to to listen in to this forum, we have exciting uh, resource persons that will be talking about uh, different diverse, uh, giving us diverse perspectives on the theme. On May 11th and 12th, uh, 2021, we will be having, uh, we'll be, hold on please. On May 11th and 12th, 2021, the Nigerian Council of SPE will be carrying out an annual technical symposium facilitated by the Lagos section. And the theme for this is successful marginal field development in Nigeria, holistic strategies for acquis from acquisition to profitability. So we really look forward to having everyone in this session. It will be a two day power packed session for our marginal field operators and uh, as, as, as aspirants to join in and learn different strategies to becoming profitable in this space. And finally, I would like to implore everyone to follow SPE Lagos section on our social media handles. We are present on LinkedIn using your city handles on the screen. We are also present on Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and YouTube. Most of our live events are also streamed or available on YouTube. Uh, it can be watched later at your convenient time. So please follow us and join SPE membership if you haven't done so yet. Uh, there's numbers and email addresses on the screen are people you can reach out to easily. They'll be happy to, to guide you. So once again, I say thank you to everyone who has taken time to join. We are really um, appreciative of your of your time and we look forward to see you again in the next uh, upcoming events. Do have a great day. Thank you very much. See you later. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye, -bye. Yeah.